Hi there. Recently, I've been looking through the comments underneath my videos and I noticed that lots of people want me to do a video about so-called Nixie tubes. So guess what? Today I will be talking about snubber capacitors. I'm just kidding, because I actually just finished creating this retro looking Nixie clock, whose main components are obviously for Nixie tubes, a high voltage power source, an Arduino, an RTC and wood filament for the custom 3D printed enclosure. Initially I thought this project would be a walk in the park, but there were some problems I ran into. So let's not waste any more time and let me show you my journey of creating this Nixie clock. Let's get started. This video is sponsored by JLC PCB, whose service I used for this project in order to get 10 PCBs for my Nixie clock at a low price. So feel free to upload your Gerber files as well and order PCBs for your own projects with ease. First off, let's talk about the Nixie tubes. It is basically a glass tube filled with gas in which wire mesh is placed that forms the digits 0 to 9. All the numbers have one common anode, so a plus pole, but a separate cathode, so a minus pole, in order to light up each digit individually. The big attraction of this display is basically the warm cozy light it gives off, as well as the mechanical construction of the tube itself. And of course, there exist different kind of Nixie tubes when it comes to their size but I settled on the IN14 ones, since they are still widely available and also rather cheap in comparison to other Nixie tubes. And with the help of the datasheet, we can easily identify which pin is connected to which digit. So I hooked up positive 12 volts to the anode and ground to the digit 5 cathode. And as you can see, nothing happens because such a Nixie tube requires a 170 volts firing voltage. That means we need a high voltage DC power supply. And that is the point where I have to warn you that working with such a high voltage can lead to fatal injuries. Replicate the circuit at your own risk. With that being said, I searched for Nixie high voltage supply on Tindy and quickly found a promising looking one. What I really like about it is that the physical dimensions along with the efficiency tests and even the whole documentation of the power supply are available. After receiving it, I powered it up with a 12 volt supply, which like expected created 170 volts on the outputs. Before connecting it to the Nixie tube though, I realized that while the tube requires 170 volts for firing, it only requires 145 volts and 2.5 milliamps for maintaining its function. So by doing a simple current limiting resistor calculation, I came up with a required 10 kilo ohm resistor that needs to be able to handle above 62.5 milliwatts. After connecting such a resistor to the anode, I finally hooked up the high voltage in order to find out that the Nixie tube works just fine. Next, I got myself those K155 ID1 driver ICs, whose old datasheet can tell us that it is a BCD to decimal decoder designed to drive gas filled Nixie tubes. Perfect! To use them, you simply have to supply them with 5 volts connect their 4 inputs to a microcontroller of your choice and their 10 outputs to the 10 digit pins of the Nixie tube. Then by pulling the 4 inputs high or low according to the given truth table, you can activate each number individually. Since I will be using 4 Nixie tubes, 2 for the hours and 2 for the minutes, I will need 4 of those driver ICs and thus 16 output pins of a microcontroller. Luckily, the Arduino Pro Mini comes with this many output pins and even features a few more ones so that I can still connect an I2C RTC, aka real time clock, for which I use this DS1307 breakout board. 
In a nutshell, you only have to program its time once and then it keeps track of the time by itself by using the power of a 3 volt lithium cell. So the functional principle of my clock looks like this. The Arduino gets the current time from the RTC and then it activates the drivers in order to display the hours and minutes with the Nixie tubes. And with those ideas in mind, I created a proper schematic for the project with the free EasyEDA online software. As soon as that was done, I clicked the convert to PCB button and started the PCB design by properly positioning the Nixie tubes next to one another with a defined distance, which I figured out beforehand. Then I defined a size for the outline of the PCB and started arranging the remaining components around the tubes. The two special things about this PCB design is that I for one positioned most of the components on the back side in order to save space on the top side so that the housing can later easily close and also that I had to increase the clearance of the ground copper layer because of the high voltage. Once my PCB design was complete, I ordered 10 PCBs with black solder mask and anic rose surface finish for a rather low price through JLC PCB, which I then received after a week of waiting. The quality of the PCBs was certainly awesome and thus it was time to firstly solder in all the SMD components, followed by the resistors, 5V regulator and 16 pin IC sockets. Afterwards, I soldered male headers to the Arduino Pro Mini, added female headers, pushed them into the PCB and soldered everything in place. I later repeated the same procedure for the RTC breakout boards. Before doing that though, it was Nixie tube time, which was the hardest to solder. My tactic was to shorten all the pins, remove the socket, hot glue it in place right above the solder points, push the Nixie tube in place with a lot of patience, solder the pins and remove the hot glue. And after adding all the remaining components, the electronics for the Nixie clock were complete. And thus I hooked up 12 volts, ground and 170 volts for testing. After then connecting an FTDI breakout to the Arduino in order to program it, I created a simple function which basically allows me to display a different number on each display. As a first test though, I simply wanted to cycle through all the available digits of the four displays. But after uploading it, I noticed quite a few problems. The first one was that the numbers counted down instead of up. The reason for that was that the pins of the tubes were not connected to the proper outputs on the driver ICs due to a layout error. To fix that, I only had to reverse the numbering inside my created function and thus we easily got the correct counting for the hour digits. The next problem was that the next tube could only display uneven numbers which according to the truth table could be a problem with input A aka pin 11. As it turns out for some reason pin 11 of the Arduino is not able to properly pull the input of the driver IC low. To fix that I had to hook up a 2710 ohm pull down resistor to the pin, which made the first digit of the minutes counter work just fine. Now the last digit did not work at all, because I used the pins A6 and A7 of the Arduino, which coincidentally cannot be used as outputs. So all I had to do was to connect those pins to pin 2 and 1 and change those values in the software in order to make everything work. And with those problems out of the way, I uploaded the DS1307 test sketch from the Magic Designs DS1307 library to the Arduino in order to use the serial monitor to set the time of the RTC. Afterwards, all I had to do was to include this library in my code and add a few more lines in order to read the time and display it. And as you can see, my Nixie clock works just fine and thus it was time for me to design a proper enclosure for it in 1-2-3D design. And with the help of this wood filament, 
I 3D printed not only the lids with cutouts for the tubes, but also the main enclosure. After drilling a hole in it, in order to later glue a DC input jack in place, I sanded it all down and made it all look nice and shiny with the help of some wood oil. Then I connected all the components to one another with wire, secured the power supply to the bottom with M2.5 bolts, pushed the main PCB in place and closed it all up with the lid, which I secured in place with M3 bolts. And just like that, my retro Nixie clock was complete. And I hope that you enjoyed watching my journey of creating it. If so, don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hitting the notification bell. Stay creative and I will see you next time!